Time to push the button. In March of 1997, Cartoon Network launched Toonami, a TV block dedicated to airing edgy cartoons for kids and teens. It became a cultural phenomenon for many young kids like myself at the time, introducing many to Japanese anime for the very first time in the United States. Shows like Dragon Ball Z, Yu Yu Hakusho, and Full Metal Alchemist aired late. Viewers like myself stayed up past midnight to watch these shows on Saturday. And many of these shows became some of my classic favorites. This was really the beginning of anime's mainstream journey in the United States. Today, anime is everywhere. Platforms like Netflix, Hulu, and Crunchyroll dominate the anime streaming industry. The anime market itself is also expected to reach 10 billion by 2033. Once a niche genre when I was in high school is now pretty mainstream. Characters like All Might from My Hero Academia appear on cereal boxes. Fitness fans embrace anime-inspired personas from shows like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Costumes from series like Naruto are also a huge favorite during Halloween. Anime has become a craze in America following in the steps of Mexico, France, and Brazil, where it's already been a massive hit for decades. And if you're interested in why Dragon Ball dominate Mexico, you can check out this video here. Also, subscribe to this channel for more videos like this in the future. But despite anime's rising popularity, Hollywood executives still remain skeptical. The co-director of Kung Fu Panda 4 revealed that while Hollywood recognizes anime's influence, many executives believe that Western audiences really don't care for these type of storytelling that anime offers. She said that quote, Hollywood executives are fully aware of the influence and impact that anime has across the globe. They still refuse to take any lessons from the medium due to their own bizarre belief that audiences don't really like these type of stories. To them, anime is either relegated to the status of kids cartoon or simply misunderstood as an outsider genre. And one reason that anime continues to innovate while Hollywood stagnates is because of its formulaic approach. This is especially true in action as well as superhero films. For years, Hollywood had relied on what is known as the Marvel formula, a predictable structure used in superhero films. The formula goes as follows. The first act introduces the hero and their origin. The second act sees them coming into their own powers. The third act has a hero facing a villain of similar abilities often with a sequel tease in the credits. While this formula has worked in the past, it has become tiring leading to franchise fatigue. Recent Marvel movies like Ant-Man 3 and The Marvels have flopped. They lost millions to weak villains as well as bland, predictable stories. Ant-Man 3 fell short of the roughly $600 million needed to break even. It lost roughly $100 million and The Marvels also reportedly lost $237 million in that same year. The Marvels also tied for the worst cinema score for an MCU film. It was also one of the few MCU films to not outgross its production cost. The problem really lies in Hollywood's refusal to deviate from the familiar. Executives believe that rehashing popular stories and characters is a safer bet than taking risk. Sequels, prequels, and reboots are favored over originality. This strategy allows studios to rely on pre-existing fan bases to minimize the risk of failure. However, the safety net really stifles creativity. It leads to similar storylines and eventual audience disinterest. On the other hand, anime thrives on experimentation and risk-taking. This is thanks to in large parts to its relationship with manga. In Japan, manga is the basis for many animes. It offers more genres than just superheroes unlike American comics. Unlike Marvel or DC Comics, which are owned by corporations, manga creators keep more control of their popular works. This gives them more creative freedom, so anime explores everything from slice of life to fantasy to sports. It also has more variety compared to American animation. Genres such as isekai are ordinary characters who are whisked away into fantasy worlds, and some of my favorites include being reincarnated as a slime. Sport animes like Blue Lock also play a pivotal role in increasing the popularity of soccer. The manga's creator also helped redesign the jersey for the Japanese national soccer team. Moreover, anime's connection to the Japanese culture make it uniquely appealing. Shows like Naruto draw from traditional Japanese mythology like the Nine-Tailed Fox. Also, concepts like chi or chakra appear in many anime. This includes Dragon Ball, Bleach, and One Piece. This is referred to as Ryatsu or spiritual energy in Bleach. In One Piece, it's called Haki, and in Dragon Ball, it's called Kai. Anime's cultural depth and moral complexity also sets it apart. American shows focus on clear-cut heroes and villains. Anime characters often exhibit both good and bad traits, making them more nuanced and more relatable when it comes to storytelling. Visually speaking, anime also sets itself apart. Japanese animation pay great attention to details in its characters' setting and background. It aims for realism and intricate details. Characters often have large eyes, complex hairstyles, and detailed clothing. This makes them way more lifelike compared to the comical exaggeration of most American animations. Animes also use dynamic camera angles, zoom, and shading to heighten action scenes. 
This creates an immersive experience for viewers beyond just visuals. Anime's appeal also lies in its storytelling. Series like Attack on Titan explore deep as well as complex themes. They include the morality of violence, the cost of survival, and a tough choice in high-stakes situations. These deep and thought-provoking tales attract viewers tired of Hollywood's simplistic good versus evil stories. One of the most horrific scenes of all time happened in the show Full Metal Alchemist. After years as a licensed state alchemist, the scientist Tucker failed to impress the government. He figured that his life would be over if he lost his license. So he did the unthinkable. To save himself, he fused his daughter with their dog. In the process, he created a monster that I still think about from time to time. And this brings up questions about how a man can do this to someone he loves so much. And storylines like this really make you think about anime as well as life. It gives anime an emotional depth that many Hollywood blockbusters lack. Hollywood's hesitation to embrace anime is partly due to its inability to fully grasp or control the genre's cultural nuances. Anime's deep ties to Japanese mythology and folklore makes it hard for Western studios to understand. Also, Japan's anime industry has a different model. Studios often adapt manga to boost their sales. In contrast, Hollywood's animation are mainly targeted as kids as well as certain adults. I remember shows like SpongeBob, The Fairy Odd Parents, and Codename Kid Next Door. These were the shows that I grew up watching. As I grew older, I started watching adult cartoons like South Park, The Simpsons, and Rick and Morty. I really believe that kids' cartoons do a great job at being interesting and different. But these adult stories feel too familiar. They all center around the modern family unit. Each episode has a single theme and very little cohesive narrative. And don't get me wrong, they're all great in their own way, but it feels the same. Shows like The Simpsons, American Dad, Family Guy, and The Cleveland Show all portray different versions of the modern family. And adult cartoons in America basically feel the same. Despite many challenges, anime continue to rise in popularity globally. Its diverse characters, emotional complex storylines, and stunning animation resonate with viewers. And it does a really good job blending intense action like Demon Slayer with deep stories. It gives a visual and emotional experience that Hollywood CGI blockbusters fail to match. And many traditional networks still fear this new challenger. Only online platforms like Netflix aim to make anime more mainstream and they really seek to expand its popularity. In 2021, half of Netflix subscribers watch some anime on the platform. They include new as well as original shows, beginner series, and old favorites. They have Japanese favorites and even their own creations like Blue Eyes Samurai, Pluto, and The Great Pretender. On platforms like Netflix, anime accounts for 6.8% of its total demand. And this demand is even higher on other platforms like Hulu at 11.8%. And it's likely that the success of anime will follow in the steps of other countries in South America. Online platforms will continue to try to capture this demand. And Hollywood would continue to do what they have always done. Anime's success show a demand for original, bold, and emotional entertainment. While Hollywood is stuck in a cycle of formulaic stories, anime offers a fresh, dynamic alternative. Its rise also reflect a shift in audience taste. There's a desire for more unique as well as emotional stories. As anime captures a global audience, Hollywood may need to rethink its approach, or risk being left behind. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, I hope you guys enjoy it. Make sure to stick around for new content in the future. Some of the videos that I plan to do in the future include why Japan produces so many elite athletes, and I also want to finish the video on why the Washington Wizards have so many fans on Chinese Twitter. These are videos that are coming up, so if you want to see them, make sure you subscribe.